This week in Jamaica now, the by-elections countdown. All eyes on St. Mary Southeast for the Battle of the Doctors. Bail scandal, how a St. Catherine man used a fraudulently obtained title to post bond for a criminal. Mobe gangster King Evil killed in drive-by shooting. The latest in the murder of businessman Dennis Ramdale. And one arrested after the JPS finds an illegal connection to an indoor swimming pool in downtown Kingston. I'm Damian Mitchell and this is Jamaica Now. The major political parties are pulling out all the stops this weekend ahead of Monday's by-election in three constituencies. Electors will turn out in St. Andrews Southwest, where the PNP's Angela Brown Burke is expected to beat the JLP's Victor Hyde. In St. Andrews South, the PNP's Mark Golding is expected to trounce the JLP's Dane Dennis. But in the St. Mary South East seat, the battle is on between the PNP's Dr. Shane Alexis and the JLP's Dr. Norman Dunn. Representatives of both major political parties have been intensifying their campaign in St. Mary Southeast. The stakes are high because a win for the JLP means it would increase its parliamentary margin from 32-31 to 33-30. In the meantime, the PNP says it does not believe the citizenship controversy involving Dr. Alexis will impact his chances in Monday's by-election. Dr. Alexis, who was born in Canada, has been living in Jamaica for more than 30 years, but he does not have Jamaican citizenship. Since the JLP raised the issue, Dr. Alexis has started the process to obtain Jamaican citizenship. On Wednesday, the PNP candidate announced that he has now submitted his application. The PNP General Secretary Julian Robinson says he has not detected that the citizenship matter is an issue for the electors in St. Mary Southeast. He said the people were more concerned about domestic issues like roads, water and jobs. In other news, there is more worry about the security in the western city of Montego Bay with news that 21 people were killed in 10 days up to Thursday. The victims include notorious gangster Omar King Evil Lewis. He was killed in a drive-by shooting in the Catherine Hall community on Wednesday night. The 41-year-old Lewis, a resident of Canterbury, returned to Montego Bay only two weeks ago after being released from the Horizon Adult Remand Center. He was being detained there following his deportation from the United States earlier this year. Lewis has a criminal history in the U.S. and has been deported on several occasions. More than once he was charged with murder by local police but was never convicted. Police investigators are searching for clues in the murder of businessman Dennis Ramdale. Mr. Ramdale was shot dead outside his business place on Beechwood Avenue in St. Andrew on Monday, three months after his son Richard was gunned down in a Mercedes-Benz sports utility vehicle along Ruthven Road in Kingston. The police are probing whether the killings may be linked. They are yet to release details, but it is understood that sometime after 5 o'clock, men rode up on a motorbike and opened fire, hitting Dennis Ramdale multiple times. He was rushed to hospital where he died. The murder has sparked shock and outrage on social media. A probe ordered by the nation's chief prosecutor has found that a St. Catherine man used a fraudulently obtained land title to secure bail for a man who was convicted of murder in absentia. There are concerns, too, that James Alfonso Bailey may have used the same title at the Supreme Court and the St. Andrew Parish Court to post bail for a number of persons charged with violent crimes. Bailey was on Tuesday charged with forgery, uttering forged documents, attempting to pervert the course of justice, conspiracy to deceive, and making a false declaration. The allegation comes amid growing concern about the number of persons being charged with murder and other violent crimes while on bail. The Jamaica Public Service Company, the JPS, is to start charging late payment interest fees on the government's electricity bill balance seven days after the due date. The JPS Director of Communications, Winsome Callum, says the overall government debt to the power supplier was just over $5 billion and the new regime for applying interest charges to outstanding balances will affect government ministries, departments and agencies. At the same time, the JPS is clamping down on electricity theft. This week, one person was arrested in downtown Kingston after an illegal connection was found to an indoor swimming pool and hot tub. The mother of Mario Dean, the young man who died as a result of injuries received while in police lockup, has chronicled how, in the search for justice for the death, the family has been intimidated by cops. Dean was severely beaten on August 3, 2014, while in police custody at the Barnett Street Police Lockup in St. James. He succumbed to his injuries at hospital on August 6, 2014. On Monday, his mother, Mercia Fraser, told the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights that families are afraid to pursue justice when their relatives are killed by police. An officer followed me from the fifth floor of the hospital to the third floor and then back to the fifth floor. And sometimes in court, they would follow me around. And at my home, they would drive down, park a little, and then drove off. 
until we can be assured that when we go to the police, we won't end up dead, then no one will go to the police. The Jamaican government did not attend the hearing, saying it took issue with the heading under which it was being held. The hearing was titled Reports of Extrajudicial Executions and Excessive Use of Preventative Detention Against Afro Descendants in Jamaica. But the Jamaican government said it disagreed with the use of the word Afro Descendants, saying it suggested that these persons are being targeted by the police. The commission chair said the body was disappointed that the government did not turn up, saying it missed an opportunity to provide clarity. And that's it for this edition of Jamaica Now, your weekly review of the big news stories. Send us your comments at online feedback at gleanerjm.com. You may tune in to Power 106 FM for regular updates. Follow us on Twitter at Jamaica Gleaner and on Facebook at Gleaner Jamaica. I'm Damian Mitchell, and before we go, scenes from the protest for better roads in St. Andrew Western.